All right, welcome to try two of Wednesday's Live with Evie. Um, number 18, and the topic is things that save you time and sanity later. And I think why I was kicked off before my phone decided that this was a good time to download an update. And Facebook said, oh, you don't have enough bandwidth to do both and kicked me off. So I'm back. So, um, before we get started, as people are joining, and I see we have a couple of people now. Hi, Jerry Ann. Thanks for uh, bearing with me. And Jerry, uh, uh, she has also experienced this. Um, a couple of things I want to say first. I know some of you who are already here have this. Is if you haven't headed over to my website and gotten the um, how to choose priorities when everything is important freebie, then head over there and grab that because it's a great way to get everything out of your head that you want to do and prioritize and really notice the difference between what's urgent and what's important and what are the things that are neither of those. So if you're interested in that, head over to One Insight Closer and you can grab that. And the other thing I want to share is if you are a woman, then you might want to head over to Productivity for Women Entrepreneurs. That's a Facebook group that is exclusively for women entrepreneurs and it's a great place to get um, support, a little productivity boost, um, accountability, and we have some really great discussions over there. So head over um, there, you can just search for it and I'll include a link here in a minute. Uh, you can head over there and uh, request to join and I'm happy to add you. So, in the meantime, let me know what your motivation was for coming today. What are the things that you tend to be playing a lot of catch up with? Um, what are the things that, um, I'm trying to remember the wording um, from the question and I, I didn't print that out and I should have, but what are the things that you say, you know, I'm gonna do it def differently next time and then you find yourself scrambling at the last minute to get it done? Uh, the, Specifically, we were talking about um, taxes in the, the email on Monday. So, but what are those things for you? Uh, or what have those things been in the past that you have gotten a hold on and you might want to share what you learned or, or the way you handle it now? I'd, I'd love to know these things, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, um, put it in the comments below. So, I did want to spend just a little bit of time today talking about um, bookkeeping, right? Favorite topic, I'm sure, of most of us, um, unless maybe you are a bookkeeper. If you're a bookkeeper, you might really enjoy this. Hopefully you enjoy it if you're a bookkeeper. But um, someone who shall remain nameless asked a question last week in the Q&A that's only available in that Facebook group. She said, how do you handle taxes when every year in bookkeeping, every year you say that you're going to stay on top of it and then you don't and you're scrambling to put it all together and you tell yourself again, I'm going to do it differently this year. How do you actually do it differently? And I had read, I have my, my notes here if you see me looking down. Um, I read, I think maybe last month, um, a book called Profit First. Hi Kelly, uh, missed you there, but you know, sometimes you can't make it to, to events. I spoke at an event this morning that I know Kelly from, so. Um, oh, and Mary, Mary says she doesn't mind being named here uh, for being the person who asked the question about the bookkeeping. So the, the question, yes, was around how do you stay on top of your bookkeeping? And I read um, a book called Profit First by Mike McCallowitz. We'll just go with that because I'm pronouncing it wrong either way. And he, he had, the book has a really different way to, um, track what's going on in your business that I really love. I haven't implemented yet, yet, but I really love. But one of the things he talks about is doing your bookkeeping on the 10th and the 25th of the month. Um, and to do it that way because it will help you start to see the trends in your in your business. He talked about how he used to just 
um, do his bookkeeping whenever he had some time and he would say okay how much money do I have in the account and he'd pull out the bills that needed to get paid and he'd pay those and then leave the pile for the next time he had some time to, to pay them and and catch up on his bookkeeping and his accountant told him that's a horrible idea <laughs> instead of doing it whenever you have time do it twice a month set the time aside and you know continue to deposit the checks continue to you know have a spot where you're collecting your bills or your statements you know all those things that come in and then on the 10th and the 25th that's when you you go in and you pay your bills you reconcile your accounts you enter any reimbursements you know you, that's when you go in and you do all of those things um there was a piece that i wanted to read from the book uh da, da. I had highlighted it, but I'm on the wrong page. So he says in the book, um, I would show it to you, but it's going to show up backwards. So he says in the book, by looking at my bills and my deposits two times a month on the same days each time, I could see a pattern. I noticed that 80% of my bills were due at the beginning of the month and a few were due in the second half. I also so, saw how my deposits were pretty equally dispersed over the month. I realized that I had many small reoccurring bills that added up to a lot of money that were unnecessary expenses. I started to see trends and understand my cash flow. I didn't start to stack bills paying what I could and then putting the ones and then putting the ones I didn't pay back in the stack. I started to manage bills and cancel unnecessary stuff. I started to pay bills on time every bill. And her um or his he later had his graphics person tell him, I don't know what happened, Mike, but now you pay on time every time. I wish all my customers were like you. And he said before he started taking his accountant's advice, he would just pay the bills sporadically. And so he was always late um, in paying some of his bills because there just wasn't the money or he had prioritized what he had time to um to pay at the moment and then you know the rest got pushed back in. So yesterday was the 25th and if you didn't go and do your bookkeeping then I I encourage you to maybe go and update your bookkeeping and, and spend some time on that because that will really allow you to stay on top of it and it will allow you to see what those trends are. Um, and that's that's part of productivity right? Part of productivity is knowing where our money's going so that we can spend it wisely. So I, I also know that you'll hear some different um, advice on this. I had a coach that I worked with where she recommended every day going through and you know doing paying the bills that came in yesterday, um, looking at what charges had hit your credit card. Uh, she highly recommended that so you always knew where you were. That never has worked for me. <laughs> If that works for you, that's great. Um, but I think that there's maybe a couple of problems with that. One is just because you have $2,000 in the bank doesn't mean that that is money that you actually have to spend. Um, it could mean that you wrote a check a couple of days ago that hasn't cleared yet. It could be that you have another um, check to deposit that isn't hasn't been deposited yet, you know, it, it's, the money in the bank is not always an accurate representation of the money you have to spend. And I think that if you move to um, Mike's system of doing it twice a month, you have a really good understanding of what's coming in, what's going out, and what money you actually do have to spend. And he has a larger system that really allows you to wrap your head around that. So um, doing that twice a month, you know, that's something that when you stay on top of it, then when tax seasons roll around, tax season rolls around again, you will, you can be done early. You can get everything early, get everything to your accountant early, which I'm sure she would, he or she would love and appreciate. Um, and, and I'll share with you, I'll be a little transparent that taxes snuck up on me this year and I because I wanted to be doing them weekly but 
it never really worked out for me to do them weekly. Um, they just, I was behind. So I'm implementing this system for myself. So expect to see some posts in the uh, entrepreneurs, Productivity for Women entrepreneurs to not only, you know, help you guys stay on track, but to give me that extra push to, to stay on track. So um, that's one thing. Uh, somebody had said, let me see, I'm trying to go back. Somebody said, doo doo do court preparations, taxes, and bookkeeping. So that's what Kelly had said she was interested in. Um, I'm not sure what you're looking for for um, court preparations. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how to help you there. I'm trying to remember, Kelly, um, I'm not sure what you mean for that. So if you want to share what that is, um, maybe I have a thought about it. So let's see, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Oh, something else to do monthly is look at, set some, basically set some goals for yourself. What do you want to accomplish this month? And what are the tasks that are going to support you with that? So that you're creating, like, these are the things that I want to get done this month and you're updating that list or it could be a master list where it's you know this is all of the things that I want to get done and you're updating it about once a month so it's current excuse me and when you do that it makes it a lot easier to create your weekly or your daily list because you're not trying to keep all the things in your head um, as David Allen says, you know, your David Allen is um, the writer of Getting Things Done. And he has a quote, I'm going to paraphrase it because I'm not going to get it exact, exact, but um, something he says something along the lines of your brain is for having ideas, not storing ideas. So make sure that you're writing down the things that need to get done. That way, when you're creating your list for these are the things that need to get done this week or these are the things that need to get done today, you can look at that list and you can easily see what are my high priority things that I want to be doing. Um, the other thing that that can save you some time and I'm sure Mary Wu can, can help you uh, a little bit with, you know, different options to use for this, but it's scheduling your social media posts. Um, social media can be a big black hole. So if you're posting things fairly regularly to your business, then schedule those out. You know, if you know what you, if you have a theme for the week, you know, you can schedule what the things are that you want to share on there. Or even if you're just sharing content that you think that your follow followers will be interested in, you can batch those up. I know that for my um, my Facebook group, Productivity for Women Entrepreneurs, I schedule the, the daily posts that go up. So I have posts that go up Monday, Tuesday, um, I think Friday and Sunday. I think there's a day in there that I'm missing. But I, I schedule those. So I go in and I schedule those to, to be sent so that I don't have to remember every morning um, to go in and schedule those posts that, you know, whether I'm at a networking event or driving or having breakfast, then, you know, those posts are going up. Oh, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook pages has a schedule, Mary uh, says, Mary Wu says. And there's also Hootsuite and Buffer. I know Hootsuite is what I use to schedule into my group. Um, generally for my Facebook page, I use the scheduler in Facebook because Facebook likes it when you use Facebook things, um, as Mary Wu has taught us. So scheduling um, posts just to save yourself some time. And then the other thing I want to share here um, is know what works for you. So I used to really feel like I was always behind when I was scheduling my doing my newsletter that um, I used to feel like I was always scrambling to get it done. I, because I had this belief that my newsletter, if it was at the time it was going out on Thursdays and I felt like if I 
was really on top of things, it would be done and scheduled on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, you know, it would just automatically go out and I could be out doing something else. Um, however, that doesn't work for me. I usually write my newsletter, now I write them on Monday, the format's changed a bit. Now I write them on Monday and they go out on Monday. And that works for me. Uh, writing them any sooner than that, generally I just get really stuck. And generally I'm thinking about them earlier and I, I'll have a couple of ideas floating around and then on Monday when Monday morning is my time to write my newsletter, about 90% of the time that's, that's when it happens, then I can pull some of those ideas together and start writing and that's what works for me. So my... Um, on the other side of that, there's other people who what works for them is having a month of posts already written, ready to go. So they'll spend, you know, a day or two writing the entire, um, or however long it takes them, but writing out the posts or the blogs or the newsletters, however you want to say it, writing out those articles in advance so that they have, um, you know, all of them that they're going to use for the next month are all done at once and they don't have to worry about it. You know, they're all done. Maybe they just add a personal note to it or something. So I share that just to say, you know, know what works for you. If you feel like you're scrambling around something, take a step back and notice if that's just the way you work and maybe if you have a judgment around it. So like I said, with the newsletter, I had a judgment around writing it the same day, that somehow that was lazy or um, not good. It's fine, it's what works for me. So once I was able to identify that, I was able to change that, that story that I had for myself around that. So look at that for yourself. Again, you know, what, if you're feeling like you're scrambling, is it a story that you're telling yourself or is it actually something that you need to change and do something different with later. Um, let me see what comments came in. I know Mary had said something. Kelly had said court prep, basically more bookkeeping type procedures. So the twice a month idea. Okay, good. Kelly, I'm glad that'll work for you. Oops. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, and Mary says, you know, she's had some family health issues that sometimes throw a wrench in the schedule. Yeah, I think that's sometimes something that that we forget is to be gentle with ourselves. You know, sometimes things don't get done because um, other things legitimately came up. And be gentle with yourself. Reevaluate. You still want to... Um, how do I want to word this? You still want to have a know the difference between the urgent and the important. Um, so I would say that taxes and bookkeeping are definitely important because you want to have a good idea about where your um, where you are financially in your business and how things are going, and that can help to inform you about whether you want to, you know go and, and buy XYZ or spend the money on something or if you want to find a different way to do it. So, let's see what else has come in. Oh yeah, Kelly, you like the concept, that, that idea? Reframe the perception? Yes, absolutely. Um, as, a, as a fellow coach, I know you get that, where sometimes it's the stories we're telling ourselves as opposed to, you know, something that's actually um, going wrong. I think I've addressed most of the questions here. Yeah. All right. So again, uh, just to, I'm looking over my notes again. That's what's happening when I'm looking down. Just to recap, uh, if you're looking for a good book to read about how to really stay on top of your accounting and your bookkeeping and really understand, um, how your business is doing in a way that's, less convoluted than traditional bookkeeping methods, um, but still, 
your accountant will be able to, to work with. Check out Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Um, let's see. Let me show you. He just did... I'm going to flip this. Oh, I always have the light over top of the edge of it. Um, he just did a... Um, what's the word? He just updated this book. So a couple of years ago I think he came out with the first version and he expanded it um earlier this year with stories and um, made it a little easier to read I guess I didn't have the first uh copy of it but he made it easier to read um yeah Stephanie I think you would really like this book I think you would really enjoy uh his unconventional approach to to bookkeeping so I highly recommend that book. Um, if anyone else wants to implement the the methods, I'd love to chat with you and and see uh, how how you implemented it and and what it looks like for you. But yeah, so the first thing, um, do your bookkeeping twice a month, the tenth and the twenty fifth, to really have get a bird's eye view of what's going on in your business as opposed to just you know whenever you have time. Um, the, the second thing was to once a month update your master list so that you really have a clear idea of right now what's everything that's in your head that needs to get out of your head and you have that clear list of things you need to do. Um, the third thing was schedule social media posts. Um, you don't schedule personal interactions. That's impossible. <laughs> but schedule you know your page posts if you have a Facebook group schedule those daily conversation starters that you might have um, side note with the the Facebook group posts for your own Facebook group if you have one before you create those be very intentional with what those questions are and how they um, support your group and influence its its feel and then know what works for you. Just because you work one way and somebody else works another way, that doesn't mean that you're behind or you're struggling or you're scrambling. It, it's just, it can just be that that's how best you work. So if anybody has any additional questions on this, you know, comment below. I'm happy to answer them. Again, if you haven't headed over to One Insight Closer and gotten the freebie, How to Choose Priorities When Everything is Important, head over there and grab that. And if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, Productivity for Women Entrepreneurs, join us. We have really great conversations over there. And um, it's not it's not just me talking at you. And it's definitely not a pitch fest over there. So you know, join us over there and um, join the conversation. Share what you have going on. Uh, share your top priority and and the new and fun things going on in your business. So that brings me to a close today. I hope everyone has an absolutely fabulous and um, a fabulous week where you're doing the things that support your productivity. And until until next week, much love. Bye.